Okay, so we're on our third show, and I'm pro you're probably asking, why a million new golfers? Why do we want to introduce a million new golfers, Connor? A million new golfers. Well, if you haven't noticed already, Sean's career as Will Ferrell's stunt double is in trouble. <laughs> And, uh, and we got bored and we figured, why not? I can only do golf for Will. Exactly. Why not see if we can use the internet and the world that we're evolving into and see if we can get a million people, one million people, uh, either reintroduced to the game, introduced to the game, or back hitting golf balls at a driving range, being outside, enjoying something that they either love or used to love. So, so through the power of social media, Twitter, Vine, uh, five, ten second videos that you can send us. We think we can change the way that people are introduced to the game and they can learn this stuff, a lot of this stuff, at their house on their own time so that when they come out to play, like corporate events and stuff. That's it. I mean, you know, and back in 2006, uh, my, my internet provider asked me, you know, they, they said, Sean, you should be on YouTube. And I'm going, what's a YouTube? And so they showed me what it was, and I started on YouTube back in, in late 2006, and you know, 24, 25 million hits later, I'm realizing, whoa, wait a second, this is how the world works now. So this is us, you know, using the tools that you guys are used to using now, and we're going to use that to learn golf. And we know we've got the way to do this. We're, we're lifers. That's what we do. So what are we doing today? We're wearing blue t-shirts, and we're talking about golf. Yep. Yellow. Yellow and blue t-shirts. All right. <laughs> okay, so today we've talked about some other things in the past, shows. Please watch them. Yep. If you want to interact with us, hit us up on Twitter at Million New Golfers. You can also email us. A couple people have emailed us. Uh, email's dying, right, Matt? It's dead. It's dead. We killed it. <laughs> Sean, what are we talking about? We're talking about grip today. Now that you've got your club, right? You, you, you're from, for those of you who were in the last episode, um, you need to know how to put this club together with yourself, okay? So this is a bone that we're going to attach to the rest of the bones of the body. So Matt, we're going to do a little close-up here. So lead hand, the top hand. So if you're, you notice I'm wearing a glove. Eh, everybody asks me, you know, when you start, which, which hand does a glove start on? Well, if I'm playing right-handed, swinging this way, I'm going to put the glove on my left hand because that's where the most pull is going to be exerted on is on the lead on the lead hand all right so holding it like an umbrella here's your umbrella handle notice i'm wrapping my fingers around that handle and i'm using the fingers to compress the handle right underneath that heel pad so you can see how now a good acid test for this is feel where you would want to put the club if you're going to squeeze the tar out of it okay so if i hold the club this way Notice it got a nice big hole right there. And uh, this leads to uh, what uh, Connor was talking about. In the previous show, he says, this is how the club should be sitting down. Now, a lot of you are going to look at how that club is sitting. You're going to try to marry your grip to that, and that's going to put your hand in a very precarious position. That's when you're going to have that, that big gaping hole right there, and the club's going to be moving around in your hand. You're going to put a big, fat hole in your glove, and you're going to say, well, this is already costing me a lot of money. Okay, so we don't want that. So the way you would hold the club is you're using those fingers to grip that, that club under the heel pad. So if let's say you were a gymnast and that was your parallel bars, you don't want to hoist yourself on top of the parallel bars or you're holding on to a rail. You grab your rail, okay? You just put the thumb on top. That's how you would hold that club. So notice as you now hinge we're, we're going to be talking about the wrists mm -hmm. connor once that grip is installed what's a good acid test okay wonderful acid test if you're young and single you this analogy will work properly and if you're married just in, input your wife or your girlfriend but if you can hold the club in one hand like this and lift it up like you're on a date and you have an umbrella and you don't want your date to get wet if you can do that your wrist is probably functioning the way it should, okay? So you got two tests. One, one's the umbrella test. You can do the umbrella test with your lead hand, my left hand. You can do it with your right hand, like this. And you can also hold both of them and do it like that. And then the other thing I want you to remember is if you were a ninja 
and you were trying to cut somebody in half with a sword, okay? And they were like right there. You're not going to hold the sword like this. And if you are, you're a really crappy ninja. <laughs> That's pretty gory, man. So, so the part of the wrist that Connor is talking about, here's a little anatomy lesson for you. It's called the anatomical snuff box. It's actually a medical term. I'm not making this up, okay? Anatomical snuff box. So this is where your wrists are going to hinge. Now, once we've got the lead hand put in there, the thumb and the grip are now married together. So we're going to put the thumb and the grip right in the lifeline of that right hand. So you notice how it's fitting right there. I'm going to wrap the other fingers around, but you notice how the underside of the knuckle of the right index finger stays on top. So we're going to hook that on. See that? Now, if you look at it from the front, as I'm hooking that on, there's the, the pressure. The thumb just comes alongside right there and prevents the club from falling into this gap as you hinge it up and down. Okay, so notice I'm hinging that up and down. Nothing is moving in my hands, okay? And then you're going to see, you know, your buddy, if you're being introduced to golf by your buddy, the first thing they're going to want to show you is how the interlocking grip works. Yeah. In, there's three of them. <laughs> there's this one, baseball, okay, interlocking, and overlapping. And we don't care. You can use any of them. As long as your wrists function properly, okay? Here's another cool acid test you can do, right? If you can hold the club like this, and you can hinge it, and you can get this to be like about 90 degrees, your money, okay? But if you grip the club like crazy, like you're driving a motorbike, or like you're not able to hold an umbrella up. Moped. Yeah, moped, yeah. Look at that, that's like not even, that's 180 degrees, it's terrible. Okay, so this right here, this is all style points. This is hip hop, this is classical, this is country. You, you just pick the one you like. We don't care. We just want the wrist to function properly. Okay, that's an interesting analogy there with the musical stuff. Thank you. All right, so um, you've got your club. You've got the club set up with yourself. You know how to grip it. So you get a club, put it by your couch or next to your computer, you're watching YouTube videos, you need to take a break, you pick up the club, there's the umbrella, there's the lifeline, hook on that index finger, so you notice how the index finger hooks on right there, like a trigger finger, and the thumb comes alongside, so then when you're hinging up and down, you just grab the club and give it a good hinge, and you feel like as you're hinging up and down, nothing is moving in your hands, okay? So there's your acid test, I mean, just put the club down, do what you're doing, grab it back again 10 minutes later. So get used to holding the club and then putting it down and holding it again and just assembling and disassembling your grip, right? Nice. Okay, we're going to get into some viewer questions. We're getting a lot of viewer questions by email, uh, which is great. Thank you so much for hook, you know, sending us your thoughts. We're here to help. That's why we're doing this. But if you go to Twitter, that's where we are. That's where we live. Okay? That's where I'm about to move to, you know. I'm, I'm one of those guys. I'm sure some of my buddies are sending, you, sending us some emails. So, yeah, I'm trying to... Go, going to email them. is like going to the end of your driveway to, to the mailbox. <laughs> hit, me, hit me up on Twitter. All right. So, Matt, what was the first question that we had? How hard should I be holding the club? Okay. I'm going to answer it this way. Jackie Burke is this old school dude in Texas that I met. I read his book. And he said, if you want to be a good golfer... You need to have oily ankles and oily wrists, okay? So don't hold the club like it owes you money and you're probably on the right track to being able to feel the weight of it. <laughs> Sean, take it from there. Okay. Well, let's say you have a baseball bat, you know, you're waiting for that pitch. You're waiting pretty relaxed, but as you come into impact, you notice that that, that grip pressure is going to get a little bit more fierce, okay? So you're, you'll notice that in future shows when we, uh, we talk about the swing, as the, um, the club is moving and as you're swinging the club, it's going to create more G-forces. And those G-forces means that the club's going to get pulled away from you and you're going to have to grip it more firmly the, you know, as you swing harder. So you want to feel that the grip is ready to react 
to any situation you give it. So if I'm swinging out of really thick rough, and it does happen in golf when you're, you're, you're swinging out of very thick grass, well, you'll feel the need to grip it a little more firmly. And if you're hitting a, a, a short shot around the greens, and we'll, we'll talk about the chipping and the putting and the, and, and the short game aspect, you'll notice that you're gripping it a little bit more lightly. So I want you to you know, be open to the different kinds of grip pressure that you're going to be using as you're hitting balls. Okay, the, the major part is, is when you're swinging the club, you don't want anything coming apart in your hands, okay? So using a little bit of feedback, you say, okay, when I swing it smoothly on a scale of one to 10, my grip pressure is about a four. And if I swing it a little bit more firmly, oh, look at that, it jumped up to about a nine, okay? But it doesn't stay a nine throughout the whole swing. That would be exhausting, it would be very strenuous. We're just allowing our amazing central nervous system we're, the, we're amazing machines. We're going to let that take care of it for us. Cool. Matt, we got any other questions? Why does my wrist hurt? Why is your wrist hurt when you play golf? Uh, that's a great question. Stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't stop playing golf, though. OK, okay. so I'm going to answer that question or attempt to answer that question by making you more aware, OK, as opposed to saying, uh, this is the problem, and you're terrible, and you're never going to get it right, OK? Because people are very capable and people are very smart. If you start to show them how their body's designed to move and uh, how the club's designed to be kept in balance, boom, you're going to be like, oh, okay, I get it. I can do this on my own now. So I'm going to start by saying if I was in a bar fight with you and I had to hit you one of three ways, tell me which way I would use. I can hit you like that, I can hit you like this, or I can hit you like that. Now, hopefully, if you don't want to break your wrist, you're going to pick the first one because this right here, when these, when these bones and my wrist are in alignment, it's a much stronger, stronger structure, okay? And this whole system of muscles is going to be less exhausted. So when you swing a golf club back, and we'll get into this in later episodes, but if you swing a golf club back and you hold it right here, if I let the club tip this way, there's a ton of strain that goes, oh my God, I can barely hold this. There's a ton of strain going through this whole system of muscles that's telling my brain that this is like way too hard, okay? Somewhere kind of like in here is there's this area of tolerance where the club's like pretty light and my brain goes, you could probably do this for a while. But if I get the club too heavy on this side or too heavy on this side, I'm gonna put way too much strain on my wrist and in the long run, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably get injured or like be in pain, okay? So just remember this. And then we'll wrap up the show and we need you to interact with us. But if you have like young kids and you give them the choice to walk to school in a straight line forwards or walk backwards, they're going to choose forwards every time. And they can't tell you why, but your brain knows it's easier. Okay? So one of the ways that me and Sean are going to try and interact with you is opposed to just straight up giving you the answer and trying to tell you how smart we think we are. Okay? Or how attractive we think we are. Um, we're going to give you some ways when you're by yourself to feel this stuff so that you can become your ult ultimately your own teacher. Because when you're out in the course, you know, every shot's different. It's always forever changing. You got to be, you got to be a smart machine and be able to adapt. Okay. So come on back so, in here, Sean. So, um, you know, your parents don't eavesdrop on you watching these videos, right? Bar fight's a little harsh. Okay. I mean, I'd, I'd use the punching bag, you okay. know, all right, all you right. got to be careful, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. School, a fight in the schoolyard. A tuffle. No, no, no. No fighting. Okay, man. okay. All right. No fighting. No fighting. Okay. Stay in school, kids. So, um, what's the, we, have, we have one more question, Matt, before we adjourn. Does your left arm need to be straight? Do you want to do that in the next one? Or yeah, we'll do that in the next one. That's it. Okay. We'll save it for the next time. You need to talk to us. We need your comments. How are we doing? I got a blue shirt on. I got jeans on. I'm teaching golf. Yeah. You know, that, I'll that, listen. Okay? I'll listen because I know you. I'll listen to you. Okay. You know? So talk to us online. Give us your feedback. If you wouldn't mind, subscribe like here, 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 or here. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sure Matt will put something on the screen. <laughs> Someone will do it. <laughs> and, and let us know how we're doing. And if you like us and you keep watching us and you want to get some of your friends into the game, 
Let them know us about let them know about us because there's a lot of golf information out there. There's a lot of information on the internet. Period. That's it. But we want to we want to present something in a way that allows you to talk to us, and we can help you love and get into a game that we really like. That's it. It's just you know we've done our homework. This has been in our office for years, decades. Okay, so we understand how this machine works. We understand how this works. We understand how this works and we're going to present it to you in a way that you can easily understand and uh, you'll see next next session we're going to show you how how the club and the arm swing together and that uh, that little question about the elbow staying straight will be right in there peace all the best